Go. All right, everyone. There Welcome to another. Wait, uh, Dick, Jeff, did you, this is your yeah. first time doing this, right? This is my first time doing it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. right. so, so hit the live button so we go live. I was going to go ahead and go live. Is that cool with you guys? Yeah, did you hit the button? I did. I think I did. Dan, did he do it right? I think we're live. I mean, from what I can tell, I'm not usually I'm manning the ship, but Jeff is uh, demanded to take over. I, I can't say. Well, no he doesn't like the he didn't like the quality of the shows. I thought, I, I thought it was a little unprofessional. So I wanted to <laughs> jump in and give and give my shot, give it, give yeah. it a try. <laughs> Today is a good day to talk about professionalism. Yeah, so, <laughs> exactly. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of the original Drink and Draw Social Club. Uh, this particular episode, we will be talking about John Byrne. I would like wow. to introduce our cast of characters. Here we go. Right there in the corner, we got famous Joe Casada. Look at him. Yep, drinking. Me, drinking Jeff Johnson. Joe. The uh, the burnt Dave Johnson, right there, and then the urban barbarian. Dan Pan Ocean. Hi guys. I love how Dan, Dan waved. Dan did a he did, <laughs> he, did he did wave. Thing like was like it was very nice. Was like, well, yep. This is, I'm just yeah. Let me uh, open a beer. Dan, what are you drinking there? What do you got? Well, because because as people have noticed, Ben isn't here. Right. Um, he can't give me hell about drinking a Michelob Ultra, which you I know he can't. No, he can't. I mean, he can if he if he types in something or he texts would he, me. Would he give me hell if I if I was drinking one of those uh, those Bud Light seltzers? Oh, those are pretty good. Actually. I mean, those do give a man heartburn. Yeah. Remember when we were in Vegas and I asked the bartender for one of those? <laughs> he got all sorts of respect. <laughs> He's that literally that always kicked me out of the bar. Is that what we got kicked <laughs> yeah. out? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't know why. It might have been something I was doing that got us kicked out. Um, Dave, you no, he said anything? something to me like, "Like we don't serve children here." It was. It was <laughs> That's all they serve there. It was pretty good. Yeah. So, I am drinking. If you guys care, um, I do. delicious mead oh. from my local. Mm -hmm. meadery. I was going to say, are we sponsored today? Are you we are sponsored. Today? Steamworks Meadery. I'm going to go ahead and put this up. What do you guys think of this? This this action here. Oh, Whoa. Jesus. Oh. Bang. Look at that. Now, Jeff, they, here's the thing, though. Why isn't there an address, yep, yep. a website? There is an address. There's that. I'm going to leave Whoa. that there for a second. And what do you guys think of this bad boy? I I like the, uh, the PNG file. Look at that. Just leave that up there the whole time. It's beautiful. Yeah. I could, but I'm just going to have that running. What would John Burns do? got a banner going. I got the banner going and everything. Nice, nice. Wow. So, uh, so I do have to say, a sponsor, um, like let's say another person, like another corporation, like Steamworks Meadery, wanted to be a sponsor. What what is the process they have to go through? Um, well, the Steamworks Meadery just gave me some mead. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Run that back. <laughs> you just so in order to be a sponsor of the Drink and Draw Social Club live stream. Live stream. What they filled do? out all the forms. They filled out everything, right? They filled out all the forms, but the most important form was handing me some mead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you give Jeff stuff and wow. you get a sponsorship. They get all sorts of finery. I love well, it. Well, I mean, the truth is I was drinking their mead before we were. I got them to give me some free mead. Yeah. So they they they, they got suckered into this, basically. Uh, you, yeah. you forced but their it, hand. It so is, fan, it is fantastic old. mead. You, you basically admitted to payola. You got yeah. paid off by I, me. Well, that was one of the best things about old drinking draws is the Jill special. Remember those? Oh, God. Uh, no. That's true. We're good. Yeah. We would go to a, a bar downtown, and, and Jill, our, our, our bartender, would make basically make fun of me and make me a drink that had every sort of like candy or weird object in the drink. It would be like a <laughs> candy cane, licorice. Yep. Um, you name it, all sorts of fruit, and it would look like this monstrosity like you'd have on some kind of crazy island. Um, it was delicious. What was it, Dave? It was, a, it was a cranberry vodka kind of base, right? Yeah, and then mixed with any sort of candy. You would just drop candy in there so there'd be Smarties in there. And, you know, fantastic. <laughs> it was good times. Very manly times drink. Many drink and draw. People were trying to kill you, Dad. Yeah. They might have been. Yeah. Well, so gentlemen, these, tonight. It's hard at work. 
Yeah. yeah. Dave's been talking, and Dave's, Dave's like the only professional here. Just Dave, work. what, well, what you are know, you drawing? Jeff didn't even introduce me, so I'm. I'm oh, I did. Yeah, I said so Dave. So he did. Johnson. He actually did. He, he said oh, Dave. Burns. Well, okay. yeah, I, I never really pay attention to any of this. So yeah. So I introduced Dave twice. Um, right. Dave, you. Uh, so I. This is sort of your not your idea, but you are a huge fan of John Byrne. Well, so, I think me and Dan were. Uh, we had our years where we were uh, John Byrne you know, aficionados, I guess you could say. Yeah, I knew everything about him. I tried to draw like him. I actually have a John Byrne Superman page on my wall. Excellent. Right it's the, that's one of the ones inked by Terry Austin, right? Yeah, it's a big, I think I bought it for like, here's the crazy thing. John sold all the pages for 175 bucks. Wow, a piece? that's great. No that matter what great. it was. Do you think he's very good now? I don't know if it was from that. That, that was like, there he is. Yep, Look some of the Man of Steel stuff. Oh, Whoop. wait, Joe. Joe's out. All right, he'll be back. Um, Maybe. So there, there, there's some, there's some John Byrne there. Um, but I wanted to, to as much as I wanted to talk about um, John Byrne himself. But like, you guys yeah. start like, what age did you guys start reading comics? Well, I, I was pretty young the initial time and then my mom made me get rid of them all because they were taking up too much space which literally it was like a stack about a two foot tall and not a lot of not a lot of comics and uh, i gave them up for a long time and then uh micronauts came out ah marvel was you know doing the uh the, the uh toy tie-in and that got me back into buying comics so it was actually Mike Golden that got me back in because he loved that art. That was just that just blew me away. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, he, he's pretty amazing. Did you have this one? You you were said you were a particular fan of this character, right, Dave? I have, that, you have that issue. Yeah, when I found him later, I mean, it wasn't like you know. That's what I used to love about comic stores: just finding these comics. You know, like yeah. things that you didn't get on the, the regular stands, um, right. you know, like, uh, uh, Raj 2000 and, uh, Doomsday plus one Canadian, uh, uh, fanzines that Bob Layton used to do. Yeah. For all, I think uh, Bob Layton comics. actually inked some of this stuff, right? Didn't he? Yeah. Isn't he one of the inkers oh, for Raj? Yeah. yeah. Cause that was all like Charlton, uh, comics stuff. I think it was like backups in Charlton comics. The, the first, I think it was, Oh God! Uh, who's who's that uh, artist that was doing? It was like E equals M C squared or on his chest. Um, uh, oh, Joe Staten. Joe Staten's yeah. comic. Staten, yeah. Right. And so those Raj two thousands or whatever were uh, in the back there. Um. So yeah, I saw I saw him there. I I, I got into comics because I was a little little kid. My dad would show me Joe Kubert, like the giant size books, and also. Um, like Batman stuff by Neil Adams, also giant sized mm. editions, like those treasury editions. And I think, you know, those are kind of built built for little kids and you read them to me. And then I, when I got older, when I was a teenager, uh, I saw that Conan movie and I started getting into the Savage Story of Conan, but I saw these these ads in the back of these magazines and it was for X-Men. And I think it was probably a Dave Cockrum ad for X Men, and I was like, "Well, that's kind of cool." And I uh, checked that out, and by then John Byrne was drawing it. In fact, it was, you remember, might have been that you issue. This one? Yeah, I mean, I have like pretty much every John Byrne comic until God, I don't know. I, I think I trailed off during uh, Next Men towards the end, but I probably have that entire run as well. I'm sure I didn't. Yeah, I have a bunch it. of that stuff too. You actually. Um... This was my, I think, my first John Byrne comic, even though it's, he didn't do the cover. You guys remember this one where Iron Fist yeah. fights Captain America? Yeah. yeah. And misunderstanding, clearly, because they're both heroes. I mean, right, I right. that out for the reader, the listeners here. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff in there, though. I mean, yes. I definitely remember um, uh, that was kind of my first, my first exposure to Byrne. And then it was very much... Um, like his stuff changed. Like back then, he was a lot more John Buscema. -y, you know, like mm -hmm. there was his figures were a bit different. I think. 
than he wound up moving on to later. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, it looks like Joe's internet has died. Yeah. So that is un yeah. unfortunate. Um, it's unfortunate. Do you guys, that. so yeah, burn. He's rebooting. Oh, good. Excellent. Well, wait, I'll let him back in. I have, I have all the power. You have so much power right now. How does that feel, by the way? Oh, look I at got, that. Imagine that? your iron fist, and I often do. And then this happens. There's some really great stuff in there. Um, well, I wanted to talk about like some of the early things. One of the things that I really liked about Burn is like I his storytelling was um it was like a, a modified Kirby. So it had some it had the excitement of a Kirby, but also sometimes Kirby could get a little bit wonky. And I think Burn his he was slicker and more structured, I think, than Kirby. Well, I think he was definitely influenced by Kirby, but his main influence was um Neil Adams as far as like mm drawing so um i remember hearing like you know i was such a big fan of terry austin inking him you know back in the day i, I went back and like kind of picked all these things up um but in john's mind like someone like tom palmer or someone a little bit you know with a different feathered line would probably have you know been more appealing to him but the fan right. response with terry on him was like you know, it's like Jim Lee and Scott Williams. It's like, you, how could you not have, you know, Jim Lee inked by Scott Williams? Totally. And in this case, it's like every fan was like, oh, my God, like, you know, so-and-so is great on him. You know, this guy's great on John Byrne, but everybody wanted um, Terry Austin. Right. You know, especially fans like me. I was definitely one of them. So, well, um, but yeah, he's like very, like, like, if you look at all this Kirby um, uh, influence, issues of fantastic four i mean it's very he's very influenced by that stanley jack kirby era and he's trying to do his his versions of that i had a subscription back when this was happening awesome yeah that's one of my favorite fantastic four covers just just the design of it is so clean and smart right yeah so here's one of the i saw so doing some research today i found this is obviously one of the most famous covers of all time Right, it's been yeah, yeah. I, so I, I ripped that off. For a right, I know, I know. I've stolen a version of it. Yeah. But do you remember this when he did it before in an issue of Iron Fist? What? That doesn't look like the other one. <laughs> it's pretty close. So you're saying he ripped off himself? I'm just saying that there's an evolution there. I just thought it's such a great idea. Why not use it over and over again? And use it on a cover, for God's sake. Yeah. Kung Fu Killer. I bet you. I bet you. If he, if Iron Fist did kill someone, it was more like they stumbled back from a kick. And <laughs> yeah, I think it was a frame job. Yeah, most definitely a frame job. Is Spider Man involved? Well, if it's a Daily Bugle, chances are there's a right. connection. That was the beginning of uh, fake news. <laughs> Indeed, you guys. Um, so you guys were collecting Burn and studying Burn, and were Burn heads. Do you remember? Um, this is another great cover that he did when he was over at DC. Oh, Deadly Dark Seed, or yeah. Side, depending on how you pronounce it. Look at Superman, lifeless. Hmm. Yeah. Dark Seed. Dave, what are you what are you drawing there? Is that uh, is that Puck? Yeah. Well, I was going to walk it on, If you click on just Dave's uh, thing, you can you can just get he could be the solo screen. So if you click on the little yeah. face on his screen below. Yeah. Hang on a second. I don't know why exit full screen. There's like a little head um, on his uh, icon screen below the uh, screen we're looking at. All right. I see the little head on the icon screen. Gray and then white. There you go. Got it. I Look can't. I, I, I'm using my phone, so I got to. Let me adjust it real quick. Hold on. God, what, what's going on? Yipes. <laughs> Yipes. What the hell's happening? Sorry, I got to. I'm. My internet's not working either, so I my phone. God have mercy. I hope that's good enough. Yeah, I love that's it. Because I'm I'm having to look at it upside down, and yeah. Here, wait a minute. Let me keep turn. Go to something else. Why? This is okay. Great. All right. There we go. Yipes. All right. Hopefully that's. Yeah. That was a little out of control, but I liked it. 
Dan, what are you going to draw? Well, here's the thing, Jeff. Um, so I started to draw something this afternoon before I started doing my writing duties. And uh -huh. I thought to myself, these clouds I'm drawing for this John Byrne piece, um, they probably, I should probably do them now. Like, I, otherwise I won't be able to jibber jabber. And, right. and a lot of the reason why people tune in is, I'm guessing just to hear my point of view, Jeff. So if well, I, that's if that's I'm what busy, all the all the comments say. That pretty much all, yeah. everything backs up. They just want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. What is Dan's opinion on this subject? So I'm like, yeah. you know, I can't do that if I'm like drawing like a maniac. If I'm drawing rendering clouds, how's that going to happen? Mm. Well, I started um, I started inking it earlier. And that, what's that? It's my delicious. This is a particularly on, good let's one. Take a, let's take a moment here. What the heck is that? That is orange bloom, steamworks uh -huh. metery. Wow, it's delish. You can see uh -huh. the banner running below there. I'm going to yeah, change that in a second. Or, like let's say, I just wanted to like research more about steamworks metery. Um, they deliver and they will ship stuff out. And uh, the owner Peter is a very great guy, and uh, everyone should get a glass. Mm. Hmm. Well, anyhow, um, look at you, Jeff. You're you're now an influencer. Yeah, now you're, you're <laughs> yeah, a, right. An influencer. So yeah, I started. You know how it goes. I started inking, and because we love what we do, we do. Oh, look at who's back. Yeah, Joe. Um, hey, Joe, I, I was so talking I got no about intro. my instrument's what? completely out. Uh, so I'm just doing this with my iPad for now. Wow. All right. You know, so I can't show any art either. Boo. Oh, that sucks. What were you gonna draw? Mm -hmm. What were you going to draw? No, I, I'm still drawing it. Oh, if I can't show it, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you, Dan, or I'll text somebody. Okay, yeah, you, can... you know, so just keep talking. In the meantime, yeah, right. you so know. I'm saying, Joe, I, I before this morning, I started drawing this John Byrne inspired um, piece. And uh, I started inking the clouds. Next thing I know, I'm sort of inking everything. So I just I have very little left to ink on this thing. Are you going mm. to tell us which character it is? Yeah, Thor. Oh, Thor. Excellent. All right. I love that. There it is. Wait a second. Cool. Thanks. So now I got to... It just kind of looks like a damn Pinocchio Thor. That's a Thor from John Burns' Thor. So the, the Fantastic Four Avenger stuff you yeah, were doing? Remember when he showed up in that one panel on Fantastic <laughs> Four when they were fighting Galactus? I do remember that. And then Thor was in the corner and he had his hammer out. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great shot. That's that's like a close up on that. Huh. Very, very cool. So Thor with his hammer out. <laughs> yeah, Naughty. John Byrne style. I see. And then Dave's got oh, you had some color to puck already? Yeah, I was gonna paint it for wow. All right. Well, it's such an easy just it's just a figure, so I figure I better plus it up a little bit. Is that the John Byrne um flash? Yeah, it's John Byrne Flash from Legends. John Byrne Flash right there. You guys remember Legends? Yeah, I do. There you go. With Brim Brimstone was one of my all time favorite villains. Oh yeah, that was a good that, I, I always liked that design. Yeah. That was good. Uh I got to draw Brimstone um in uh, one of the animated movies, uh, I can't remember. It's the one with the Toy Boy. Um, no, I can't remember the name of it. Superman, Batman. Um, Back in the day, I could never get enough of Toy Boy. Uh, well, yeah, he was. He's a great character. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, is Toy Boy in this character. episode? No, I, mean, I, I do not have a, a no no Toy Boy. Going back to uh, early John Byrne, uh, I don't I don't know. If uh, I'm sure there was people that did it before that, but it was one of my first exposures to uh, the sketchbook, the John Byrne sketchbook. I'd never seen anything like that before. And that was a big thing for me. Right. Seeing how he was doing stuff, you know, mm -hmm. like sketches. And I mean, that was a that was a big time book for me. I really enjoyed that book. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it was a uh, you. You know, back in the day, you really didn't get to see behind the scenes too much. There weren't a lot of art of books around. That was no. not as, as popular well, back then. Not for comics, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. So did what you like Alpha you? Flight, Dave? 
I bought it. Well, I don't, you know, that's I, not a glowing I, endorsement. Well, I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't look. That's not like Jeff talking. About, that's not like Jeff talking about Steamworks Meadery. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, Steamworks Meadery is pretty awesome. I mean, maybe if it got me hammered, maybe I'd like it more. But um, no, it was a good book. I, I bought all the issues. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So one of the things I, I thought was was fun about Burn that I wanted to talk to you guys about is like the influence that he had on so many artists. Do you guys remember? I believe this is it. Vic Bridges. Oh yeah, I know Vic. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I haven't seen Vic Bridges in years, but uh, yeah, I knew him from back in the day at um, AC Comics. I think I he's remember. Uh, McDonald's. He did used to work at McDonald's. This is true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought he was really going to take over for Byrne. I thought he had all of Byrne's skills and like a little bit of a... There's a little bit know, of a little problem bit more, there, you know, A little more character. The problem with Vic Bridges was that Vic, his religion kind of precluded him from drawing any scenes with violence. Yeah, like, I remember. Yeah. yeah, I remember uh, Eric Larson telling me that story about this conversation he had, you know, and, and he got the latest script for uh, Freak Force, and Vic was trying to convince him to uh, have all the characters talk out their feelings. Yeah, and, and everybody loved Vic Bridges so much that how many issues did, did he do of that? I mean, he must he did, like, tons of issues of Freak Force, right? Yeah. Yeah. So testament to... Big bridges right there, but I think you're going to be kind of limited with what you can do with when uh, when you can't draw violence in, in comics. Yeah, just you know, yeah. maybe a little bit, just a tad. Yeah, look at that. I think even Terry Austin inked him once, and I think that was it for Vic. I think he was like, okay, I can retire now. Were so any... you a big fan growing up? Who were your influences? I think we lost them. What? Oh, oh you were asking me, Dan? Yeah, I was asking you. I'm oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm too busy trying to get my internet work. <laughs> we'll hope your internet works again. Yeah. Um, what was the question? Well, I was like, were you influenced by him as a kid? By who? By uh, our, our topic here tonight. <laughs> No, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm trying to raise the volume on this thing. Hold on. Did I just lose you? No. Hold on. Damn it. Where did my screen go? Riveting. Yeah, that's pretty sorry. good. Uh, no, I was not. You were never a huge fan. No, and, and you know, I, I came into comics later, so sure. I missed out on the whole craze. Um, you know, <clears throat> My my uh, my recollections of burn are are, are not of the work. So. Oh, gotcha. You were already a professor. If, I, if I'm going to be honest. Well, I hope you would. That's this is a that's a very foundation of drink and draw. Being honest. Yeah. Really? When did <laughs> you start? <laughs> I mean, that's what's been pushing me the whole time. I'm like. This is what this is what I enjoy most about it. It's like a lot of times I'll make stuff up, and I'm like, here I I can just be myself. I can be honest, mm -hmm. not judged. There we go. You know, oh, so you're judged. So so the honest you is really the, the you that lies. That's the real me. That's the real <laughs> that's the, he's he's like that old that that uh, that Spock conundrum. Everything I say is a lie, mm -hmm. and that's right. how he kills the computer. Remember. Not really. I never watched um, a lot of Star Trek. I know that bothers you. It does a little bit. I mean, Star Trek was important for well, most of the world. It. What was your What was your 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 introduction to, to nerd then, Ben Dan? I mean, if it wasn't Star Trek, what was it Doctor Who? Was it? Um, no, was it was it? Uh, it was all Star Wars. Huh. Wasn't it mostly D and D in the beginning? Oh, well, that's I, right. think, I, I think Star Wars predates that. Um, and then I got was in, I was very into Dungeons and Dragons. Like in in the nerd hierarchy, Jeff, where would you rate? Where would you rate uh, Dungeons and Dragons to Star Trek? Mm. 
That's a good question. That's a really, that's a really interesting question. I would say that the nerd hierarchy kind of goes. I mean, like, like, in like by hierarchy, I mean, like, who's going to get their ass kicked first? Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you are a Star Trek fan, you're probably going to get beat up by a Star Wars fan because uh -huh. they will have played with more lightsabers. Right. But if you're a Star Trek or Star Wars fan, you will probably get beat up by a Dungeons They're... & Dragons fan because they will have played with more weapons than you. They've been LARPing. They'll, they'll have done more LARPing than you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Joe, how much LARPing have you done? I have done a significant amount of absolutely no LARPing. Have you never have you never been to a Ren Fair? You've never dressed up. I, I have been to Ren Fair actually. I used to have a girlfriend that worked at a Ren Fair. Well, there She's you go. Face painter at Ren Fair, so so I had no choice but to go up there. Um, quite uh, quite a culture. <laughs> yeah, you I mean, never, honestly, you ever throw a bustier on and just go? <laughs> no, you used to hang out with the uh, the mud men. Ren Fair is where I discovered my love of mead. Is John, it? It's always back to the sponsor. Well, I just say, I'm just saying, um, uh, mead and giant turkey legs. Yeah, they definitely kind of cornered that. Yeah, I'm a big turkey leg fan. You know what I'm going to do here, guys? And I hate to get us off topic because we don't like that around here. But um, I am going to tape this down because I'm going to start doing what I like to call a little spackling. A little... Oof. If you, you make that private, Joe. Or if you make that noise a couple of more times, you can tie into the uh, new Batman film. <laughs> Is that what you're going to be doing when you see Robert Pattinson? Well, have you seen the uh, have you seen the uh, the previews? No. No. Yeah, it starts off with, I guess, the Riddler uh, undoing tape. Hmm. But since well, you're not a tape Okay. Oh, that's Dan. Uh, how do I mute you, Dan? Yeah, you really. can definitely do that. I mean, mm, very mutable. <laughs> I mean, how do I how do I use this power for the benefit of all? There is a thing like right by my box. You can uh, mute me. There's a little microphone. Just you hit that and you can say mute Dan. Yeah, I'm choosing. I'm choosing not to do that. But if you keep doing the well, tape, the thing, we're going to have a problem. Tape. That's the yeah. last bit of tape I'm going to use. We are gaining viewers by the minute. <laughs> yeah. A lot of a lot of my fans like to see me do that though. Right, right, right. You got a whole thing on that. Well, you Let's got see. the fetish thing going on. Do we have any questions? That's a good, that in and of itself is a good question. Right. Where are we at with the, that's a terrible sound. Yeah, even Mark agrees is a terrible sound. Okay. And you know what you could do, Jeff? Here's the fun thing about the comments. If you click yes. on a comment, it'll actually go on the screen. Mm -hmm. Like this one. Do it. Mark, Mark Solomon, that's a terrible sound, man. And Mark Mark and I get along pretty well. Right, right. <laughs> and he doesn't like it. That's Even he doesn't the like sound it. That, that Puck's costume makes when he takes it off around the waist groin area. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, after wearing Dave, what, it for Are you going to do the all-white costume for Puck? The reverse? No, I'm I'm getting around to the black, but that'll be black. It's just a question. You don't have to fly off the handle. You know what? That's, that's all you deserve right now. Oh. Uh, just to... Yeah. To put this up, I'm actually drinking. Hang on a second. No one is drinking. I'm drinking uh, Husky Boyo. <laughs> what, what's wrong with that? That's a screen name, Jeff. I, I, I think it's a great one. It's a great screen name. Husky <laughs> Boyo is a great name. I'm it drinking a delicious what is that? cherry soda from Americana. Oh, Americana's got good sodas, man. It's really good, actually. I was very surprised. Hmm. Not sponsored. Uh, well, you should probably check honestly it out. like it. Hmm? If, we, if we were a better show, we'd have like a little, like a blackout bar. We wouldn't even show that. Um, I'm a big fan of all beverages, and Americano makes good sodas. Oh, they do, huh? You're angling they for do. a sponsor. <laughs> they do. They really do. Hmm. All right. Does this does this sound annoying? I'm erasing. Maybe everybody hates that too. Is that annoying? I'm erasing. Hey, where's the glitter, Jeff? Oh yeah, remember there's the glitter is a. It's, oh, there he is. 
We yeah. lost Jeff. Where's your glitter? Uh, so that, that's a different one. That's a, a sauce mead. That's got glitter in it. That's got drinkable glitter. This is orange blossom. Did you just say a soft mead? Sauce mead. I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah. Right. Let's take a look at uh, Dave's drawing. Right back. Where would Joe come back? He's Hang coming on. back. Things Hang are on. getting good. Hang, I know. Can't wait to get back. <laughs> Can't wait. Right, right. How do I get uh, rid of? There we go. So long as I've been without internet in a while, it usually pops back up after five ten minutes. It's super frustrating to. Uh, it sucks to have it drop out. So mine, mine dropped out not too long ago, Joe, and I had to have the guy come and fix it. And the real horrible thing is he had to crawl under the house um, yeah. to, to do the it. bodies? And, <laughs> well, there were a lot of scary – like we rent, um, but there were a lot of rats and uh, spiders and stuff under there. And I'm very glad that I was an artist and not a cable guy at that moment. Right. Yeah, you hate that stuff. I'm not a big fan of uh, spiders. Really? What about Spider-Man? Spider-Man I do like. I do enjoy Spider-Man. I don't mind spiders. You know what I hate? The brown recluse. I've been bitten by a brown recluse and a black widow. Yeah. What were you doing? Did you did you have it coming? I was sleeping. So you had it coming. Yeah, I bet there's more to it. I wasn't paying attention. Mm. There was this. I actually kept a black widow as a pet for a little while. Really? Okay, that sounds made up. Okay. Yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah. I would love. I have follow up questions. All right. <laughs> How did you catch it? Uh, it was in the barn that I. This is back when I owned a uh, like a, a house in uh, North Georgia, and I found oh, it in a okay. barn. So I put it in a jar, gave it some air, put a little stick in there. And I would feed it crickets and stuff. And such. I didn't know that Black Widows ate crickets. They love them. They eat anything they can get their hands on. Try to eat me, Jeff. Interesting. All right. They don't like mead. Found that out. Have they tried <laughs> it? I bet way. they haven't tried it. True. But yeah, I know, my, my wife at the time was not happy with me keeping a Black Widow. <laughs> surprise 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 i mean it's not like i was letting it out and playing with it or anything i mean it was pretty secure where it was what about the black widow oh, oh. <laughs> and then one day it, it spun uh one of those egg sacks and then died but i think because of uh you know there was no male involved that the eggs weren't fertilized so is the Black Widow one of those ones that does like the ballooning? I don't know. What it spider is. thing? I don't know what you're up to, Jeff. It doesn't sound yeah. good. There's some kind of kinky thing. Yeah. Like no, you guys, so ballooning thing. is when a spider they'll 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 put out a, a, a line of thread and the wind will take it and it'll carry them and that's how they move around. Uh don't know. And it's kind of like hang well, That's the official name. You're not making that up. Ballooning? I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Sounds made up. Yeah, it sounds made up. Sorry, I'm not going to buy that. I'm sure. I'm not going to take you at your word I mean, what, on the can one of, uh, I'm sure one of our fans will either tell me I'm right or tell me I'm wrong. Let's go ahead and look. How dumb am I? All right. Two bites of the Black Widow. I've drawn the Black Widow as a character. Mm. Ballooning, like Charlotte's Web. Yes, exactly. Like Charlotte's Web. Exactly like Charlotte's Web. There you go. I still don't believe you, but... Okay, that's fair. I don't blame you. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. How's your piece come along? I don't even... Uh, I can't see it, so. There you go. Can you see it? Yeah, it looks no. like a flash to me. It's a flash. Oh, shit. I got a low battery notice. Uh -oh. 
<laughs> wow. Yeah. Long I last. <laughs> Well, there's a lot. You know what, guys? This is a. There's a lot of sunspots. Yeah. Happening right now. What's that? What's that noise? Hey. Oh, I got freaked. I got freaked out there. All right. Sometimes I get freaked out. Let's talk about that. Do you guys ever get? I don't even know what the proper way to say it. Do you guys ever get freaked out? Do you ever have one of those night bears where you think you are naked and have to go to uh, take a test? Yes. This feels okay. a lot like that, this episode. Hey, so, Dan, mm. I just uh, hopefully went through. Yeah, on, you uh, sent me something? I just, yeah, I sent you what I'm drawing because I can't, I can't get online. I'm just on uh, cell service ah. at this point. Which, which, which email did you send? My, my regular email? The one that you always tell me to send it to. The yeah, only sometimes one you I send it to my, my Yahoo account. What? Sometimes you send it to my Yahoo. No, I did not send it to your Yahoo. You send it to my Yahoo? <laughs> For if you did. Just kidding. I hardly ever use that. Yes, yeah, my can like finish that's, that's you get just that? the way it is. I haven't gotten it yet, but oh. now I'm gonna now I'm gonna keep an eye out for it. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna just keep hitting send and receive, and then nope, yeah. done the messages. It's not finished, so don't be don't be too critical. So, what other memories of John Byrne can we talk about? Well, um, I do think that there's. Did you ever meet him, Dave? I did meet him once uh, early in my career. I was very excited that he was going to be appearing in Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. I was uh, working. Uh, um, I was I was uh, gainfully employed at uh, DC doing uh, my series Chain Gang War. I remember and I that. Thought, I thought, well, what the hell? I'll uh, you know go up and act like a pro. And, uh, you know, How'd that go over? yeah, it didn't go over too well. <laughs> <laughs> Was he yeah. not warm and inviting? Yeah. I, I brought my work. I brought, you know, some, uh, Xeroxes in my work, uh, from one of the issues I was working on. And, uh, I thought, you know, uh, wanted to come over and tell him how much of a influence he was. And yeah, he wasn't too, uh, impressed with, you know, me saying uh, I was influenced by him after he looked at my work. Interesting. He kind of skipped through it like he was looking for something um, in a hurry, and uh, then he threw it. He threw it. He literally threw it back at me and said, "You Paul, you draw like Paul Galassi," and then turned his back on me. How is that a bad thing? Well, it was just it, it wasn't a compliment. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I, I like Paul Galassi. I, I think he's I think he's fine, uh, but I, the way it came across, I was like, oh, wow. This this story is shocking, Dave. I just, <laughs> yeah, what you, we all know about John Byrne, that's very shocking. Um, yeah. That and uh, he came he came a couple of years later, um, I remember, and uh, what, what blew me away was he didn't want to sit like a regular convention person sits where you have to look up at the people you're talking to. Mm -hmm. He, uh, so he brought his own high chair and it literally had a drawing uh -huh. table built in. So he got to look down on people. Well, it was like that. Adult, adult size high chair. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Uh, but Hey, it worked, I guess, you know, um, did it, uh, that is interesting. I, I met him one time. I met him one time too, um, and I was a little nervous because he does have a reputation of being a little um, surly, uh, surly and bold, um, curmudgeonly and is what I've always heard. A little bit curmudgeonly, and so I met him at this convention. I had just started drawing profit, and it was a a convention. I think he, maybe it was Ohio or something like that. I'm not sure, but um, he actually came up to me which is crazy. 
And I was just sitting there signing comic books like crazy. And John Byrne was in line like everybody else. And um, did he you ask know, how much you benched? No, he wasn't interested in that. We just started. He he had heard that I was a big fan, and um, he said I have a secret portfolio. He brought it out, and some people tried to get a look. And he actually, I think he physically shoved somebody uh, backwards. Oh, this is such complete bullshit stuff. I was gonna say I don't. I I, I don't. I'm <laughs> oh, not sure God, I'm buying any of this. <laughs> What do, you, what do you guys mean? What are you, what are you just telling stop. a story here of something that happened? <laughs> All right, finish, sorry, finish the fantasy. Go, hey, go ahead. ahead. Tell, tell, tell the story no, about how you guys you barely don't believe anything I say. John Byrne wanted to show me his secret sketchbook of stuff because these are projects that will probably never see the light of day. Marvel doesn't mm. appreciate them. Mm. Um, and I said, I appreciate them. And he goes, believe me, I know that. And he goes, here they are. And then you woke up with morning wood. All right, look, look, you guys. If you if you guys don't want to, I'm, I'm actually adding some fabric to this the, the whole thing here by giving a legitimate John Burns story, where you guys are just like, oh, I'm such a fan, except for Joe apparently. But no, I actually had something to say. One of my favorite John Burns stories, and, and I, I wasn't there, so I didn't see it, so I don't have the same uh, veracity that Dan has. Mm -hmm. um, but I always heard that uh, if you brought him a reprint of a comic, he wouldn't actually sign it, but he would just stamp it Ooh, with, his, with his signature on it because he was so angry about the reprints. I have a John Byrne signature that has just him signing it because people didn't sign the outside covers. They signed the inside. It was just signed with a ballpoint pen. Uh -huh. so I couldn't have been happier. I yeah, but it, was it verified by CGC? See, I, th I think it's not a real signature. That's true. Yeah. Fair point. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's interesting how much of the um, the the art and the the artist, you know, that sometimes what you think is like what a what personality comes through in the art may or may not be um, real in the artist. I always find that fast that I always find that conversation fascinating. Like how much of someone's art gives away who they are as a person. Yeah, I actually, um, when I first met him for real, I was like, uh oh, I don't know. I, I've heard some stories, so I don't know if I, because I was such a fan, I was like, I don't know if I, I want to meet him because he's, he's a little bit moody, apparently. Um, <laughs> but I, I just I just kept it pretty simple. Well, you've had pretty good luck meeting meeting your fans. Didn't uh, Frank Frazetta want to talk to you? Well, I don't think, I don't know if he wanted to talk to me. I, I talked to Frank Frazetta. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was probably because I was buying artwork of his. He's like, all right, let me indulge this guy. Mm. So I did have a nice conversation with him. All you know, he's a big uh you know, he's into all the things he's he paints basically. So um but he's more into baseball and he, he loved um shooting guns and firearms and being from Florida, I had could speak to him on that. So I used to play baseball as a when I was in my teens and earlier so was, i was like well it's not the conversation i wanted to have with him but you know i'm, I'm pretty happy that we're, i'm having an actual conversation with him so right i talked a lot with uh, his wife ellie she's a pretty pretty personable woman sorry let's do something here there's still stuff to ink all let's right see. there we go yeah this did you get that cool. drawing from joe what? I'm, this is yeah. This is a John Byrne Thor. What? Joe, did, did you sense Dan something? Did he get it, or is it not? No, oh, I still haven't gotten it yet. Oh, let me see here. Let me check one more time. Nope. No, nope. Jeff, he probably typed it in wrong. All right. No, I didn't type it in wrong, Dan. Well, are you saying I have a faulty email? Okay. Complaining about my server. I do think one of my all-time favorite John Byrne stories. You guys remember Snow Snowblind, that Snowbird, yeah, Alpha Flight one, where he did a lot of the pages where there were just white with sound <laughs> yeah. effects. Yeah, I, again, I was as a fan I was described with my hard-earned money as a kid, and I remember getting that one. I'm like, you know what? It's still. I was such a fan. I was not disappointed with the Snowblind uh, issue. As as a fan, I was a little annoyed, but as a pro, as an aspiring pro, I thought this is this is the it. right way to do this. I wish all comics could be like this.
Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, that'd be easy, easy way to make a living. Sure. So funny, I think the stand, I mean, as much as I think John Byrne was great at his job, I do think it's interesting that how much the standards have changed. I was looking at some of those old alpha flights and, mm -hmm. um, I definitely think that they used to get away and they just artists at the time, but Byrne in particular used to get away with, um, no panel, uh, panels, like no border panels where it's just the figure or it's just the, mm -hmm. the face. You know, I um, do that from time to time still, Jeff, because I was inspired by those. I mean, I think they're great, but like they yeah. are time saving for sure. And um, the general consensus nowadays is I think every like there's just a lot more work put into a page. Um, like some of the stuff you're doing for Canary, mm -hmm. I, like you are putting way more work into these pages than people used to put into pages. I, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think there's a lot of um, I, I think it varies. I mean, look. You know, um, oh wow! Joe just sent it. He, Joe emailed it. Said he emailed okay. the post that he sent to me on my phone. Now here's what I have to do. I'll go into a little. This is this will be fun for people to um to hear about. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to email this to myself because Joe has faulty email. Mm. Wow, it's a beautiful drawing too. Too bad you actually can't be on there, Joe. Hold on. Let's see if it goes through with mine here. Oh, is Joe gone again? No, Joe's no, there. He's, he's just he's he right here. I'm, I just he's, have, he's working have, with uh, a cell phone. Uh, no internet, no TV. Oh, now, of course, it showed up. Uh, the moment I emailed it to myself, of course. Um, and then mine showed up right after. Uh, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna upload this, Jeff. All right. Okay. I don't want to jump in on your hosting, but. I got you. Hold on a second here. And Joe, you're you didn't hire someone else to draw this. You drew this. No, I was in the middle of it too. I didn't get to finish it. No. Oh. So this is this is not even finished. So you're gonna see it pop pop up, Jeff, and then you can um, place it place the art up oh, there. That's oh, beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's got a luminous quality to it there. Yeah, it's Damn, my I mom. love that. That's your mother. It's my mom. So it seems like a strange choice for me. Um, it's really beautiful, Joe. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful drawing. Yeah. I miss her. For John Burke. Yeah. John Burke episode, but um, I mean, I'm drawing Thor, so one panel of Fantastic Four. That's really nice, Joe. I like that, Joe. I'm going to leave that up for a little while. Let's just leave that there. Yeah, leave it there. It's pretty. Wish I could see it. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Here, I'll text it to you, Dave. All right. Um, Man, well, so, again, I'm, I'm using my phone, so I can, you know. Otherwise, I'd have to stop. Joe, up. is that shading? Is that done on in Photoshop? Did you do that with a, a brush or a pencil? Sketchbook. Nice. It does have a Lewis quality. What was that? Somebody is dinner ready? Dan, 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 it's you texting. Oh. Yeah. She looks kind of like um, a, movie star. Uh, a film star from like the black and white era of like. Of yeah, it's, she was uh, she was sixteen at that point, mm. and uh, she had taken all these glamour shots uh, with this photographer in Cuba. So you know, I have like three or four of them. This is based on one of them. Nice. Uh, Pretty woman. Excellent. I whipped out my Loomis. For lack of a better word. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of glamour shots, how many how many wives and girlfriends did that back in the uh, back in the day? Ugh. Nope. I don't think I ever had one that did. You, oh. never had a, you never had a glamour shot? Never had a glamour shot, Jeff. Come on. God, I both both my wives did it and I hated both both <laughs> I mean they were so terrible, so cheesy. Do you still have the glamour shots? You can't throw those out. Uh, yeah, actually, I do somewhere. Yeah, Let's put them up right now. Come on, well, find them. But Did you, you know, ever the, 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 uh, the standard uh, out again, flipping the collar up and holding it, you know, kind of uh, so bad. You Wait. know, who still does that, but it, it does it exceptionally well. Tony Donnelly, well, Tony true, he does do it well. Tony Donnelly is a good looking man, dresses well. 
one of the things I like about that drawing, Joe, is like the um, the sharp, like the the black, just a great tonal drawing. Like when I was doing, um, I, I had to go to illustration school for the army, and I had to learn how to do uh, tonal drawings, and we got graded on them. And I actually, mm -hmm. uh, that was the first time as a as a student, as an art student, that anyone had shown me the the power of like a solid black against a solid, like adding white. Like yeah. just fundamental drawing skills. That's a really great example of it. Oh, thanks. I didn't get a. Like I said, it, it, we're still working on the hair. When it looks like it's it's not uh, my internet. It's my entire internet and television provider just went completely uh, Everything tits up. You know what so, you need is the Rosh two thousand to uh, work on that. Is the John <laughs> Byrne robot? Yeah. Dave, how are you doing over there? You tell me. Why is the the, the center like of the piece so dark? Why, what was that choice? Well, it's I just painted it, so it's got to lighten up. It's got to draw. Oh. But actually, just I'm going to add black to it anyway. So just kidding, Dave. I knew that. It won't matter. I was just joking. I know. I'm still going to explain it like you're an idiot. <laughs> you know, it's like, what, a, what an animosity in this episode. <laughs> Why are you paying special attention? Like, there's not a whole lot of fold. You think a big fold would be from his chest? Dan, um, let's see yours, like Thor. Chest fold. Um, but Dave, you've you've accentuated some action there. Here, I'll switch to my other camera. Calm down. Uh, Dave's, I don't like the cut of Dave's um, jib. I think you need to calm down. Calm down. Calm it down now. Calm it down now, Dave. That's a very that's a very Neil Adamsy kind of Thor. Well. I don't know if you can tell, but I was obviously influenced a lot by um, Jorge Sufino, who was a huge influence on John Byrne. Huge. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I'm gonna have to bail because I gotta I gotta call the cable company and try to get this in order. All right, so, Joe. Sorry about that. Um, no, Joe's actually a bit, let me be, Joe's actually kind of an important guy. Like you and I, our cable goes out. It's not gonna be a big. Joe's like running things and doing actual work, or we're playing. Yeah. Uh, Paul, uh, your body get it fixed. All right. Good luck, Joe. All right, Joe. Beautiful right, drawing. Thanks. Bye. Bye, buddy. So that was Joe Casada, everybody. In case right. people were wondering. So here's the three the three characters. Okay. I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint into this, this strap. I'm mostly just drawing with a ballpoint pen. I'm not doing anything interesting the way you guys are. John Byrne had an interesting way of inking. In fact, my whole inking uh, came about when I, I learned what John Byrne used to ink with. Wasn't um, it a Sharpie for a while? No, God, no, I hope not. Um, no, but he used these, it was a Stadler Mars Graphic 3000. Mm. And uh, our buddy, uh, Eric Canetti, also very influenced by John Byrne, also keenly aware of... Um, you know, the letters column in the back of Fantastic Four read that as well. There you go. And he still, I think, sometimes uses that. And I have a, I have a stash of them. They don't, they don't really make them anymore. But um, um, I still have some, and I still, I still like when I do layouts. I'll do, um, I'll ink with those. On one side was a, a kind of a blunt tip, and on the other side was a kind of a flex, very, very flexible brush pen. Um, and then he inked a lot of the Fantastic Four that way. And I'm guessing uh, Alpha Flight because he was, here's a guy who was drawing. Um, Two or three pages a day. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was writing, writing a book, writing both books, Alpha Flight right. and uh, Fantastic Four. Maybe it was She-Hulk at the time. I forget. But whatever he was doing, he was typically doing two books a month. He was doing a ton. This is some of the She-Hulk stuff. I always liked this particular I was not a fan of She Hulk, but of, of course I had to uh, buy every issue because John Byrne did it. But I did not, you know, this is what I don't like. I'm going to complain a little bit about John Byrne. Do you mind? Are you? Yeah, I'm going to do a little complaining. Bring it. Um, any book, any book jumps the shark when the, the author and illustrator inserts themselves into the actual story. There's one thing about like drawing your buddy into like a pant in the background panel waving. Right you now, it's like only you and that that guy go. Oh, you look! I put you in the panel back here. But when 
but when an artist or writer inserts himself into the storyline and breaks that fourth wall, so to speak, and puts puts himself in there, it always that's that's the end. That's the end. That's the creative end of the story. You don't need to do that. You don't need to wink at, at yourself, and you're not even winking at the audience. You're like winking at yourself. And so whenever you do that, and he he did it towards the end of Fantastic Four, and he did it uh, in, I mean. He did it with the trial he, of Galactus. He also did a satiro, satiro, I mean, it was like a book of satire, anyhow. It was kind of like almost Marvel continuity, but not really. And right. I get it. I mean, if there's any place to do something like that, it would have been the She Hulk book. But there was, I was such a young kid. I was such a fan of comics and She Hulk and all this stuff to see, to see the kind of silliness that was always happening in She Hulk. I was like, wait a sec. You know I me. Mean? I don't like, I don't like to goof around, Jeff. No, like you're you're a very theory. serious. I would I would call you um, stop just solid, just a yeah. solid human being who doesn't no like to goof around, around at all. Yeah. No, I don't want to monkey around. I don't want to O'Brien around. Nothing. Yeah, you don't that. like you don't like monkey shines. Uh, no. You you certainly do like like shenanigans. No, and so when John Byrne was pulling his shenanigans, I'm like, okay, wait a second here. But you know what? It still didn't stop me. I was still a super fan. Right. Um, right. Right. So who else does that? There's a few artists who have done that over the years. Who like to break the fourth wall? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, that's by inserting themselves in the comic. Mm. I put Didn't myself. Dave Sim do that a bunch. Um, you know what? I maybe maybe towards the end. I don't know. I always wanted to get those collected volumes of Dave Sim's uh, service. It's good stuff. I almost I almost threw that tonight just just to annoy you, Jeff. I was going to draw Dave uh, Conan, and, Conan and Cerebus having a beer. So you'd go, wait a <laughs> second, Dan. This has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with John Byrne. I mean, it would have been, it's the antithesis for sure. Yeah. Unlike my John Byrne piece, which is like total John Byrne. Total John Byrne. Well, let me ask a, a John Byrne question. Let me go back to this image. Let me ask a John Byrne question from the the from you too, because you're far more knowledgeable about the the finishing of a page than i am that one what is that so when he did omac yeah. he used um that kind of board oh it's called duo shade you can't really see it too good in this this right. but it's called duo shade and so there's um, so you could ink it's like regular paper um mm -hmm. and then there was two fluids and so you'd paint it on just like i kind of painted this right but it would create a pattern like his like a um a linear pattern for the most like a cross part. I'm sure, there was, I'm sure there was dot there was a dot pattern but typically everyone from wally wood and harvey kurtzman from the ec era that used that paper it was just a it was a way that um because the printing wasn't as good as it is now so it was right. a way to do gray tones and zip a tone quickly and effectively and um they, you put another fluid on top of that and it would cross hatch over it so you can get an even darker pattern mm. So he clearly was into that, and was, that, that paper was hard to get. I mean, I, I think I bought some. I still have some. I don't know. I'd have to find if I have the fluid that would, you know, react with the paper to create those tones. Yeah, it's probably. Yeah. Did you ever try that, Dave? No, I uh, never got the pay. I never. I can never find it. Um, you look hard enough. I think uh, Tim, Tim uh, Bradstreet bought it all. <laughs> well, it seems like that was a very, it was a short lived commodity, right? Um, it's probably a couple decades and that was it. You know, by the time, I think by the time the 90s had rolled around, you could still kind of find it by probably the end of the 90s. You, they probably were not making it anymore. Well, what's Photoshop? I think that um, one of the things that, that really changed for comics and publishing in general was Photoshop changed everything with the way things were colored and textured and oh, yeah. all the techniques you could do. It just, it changed all the mechanical stuff, the chemical stuff that you would have to do. Like Zipatone, no one had to buy it anymore. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I just, I love using, I love the look of Zipatone. And when you see it on my work, it's, um, it's all digital. Right. I mean, I've done a few pieces like for fans where I still have some old Zipatone. And, um, but, you know, it's the problem with Zipatone is that let's say you use a marker underneath it, that uh, that acetate, because it's a clear acetate, reacts with the marker and it'll turn that marker.
purple. Right. You know, it'll, it'll spread everything below it. I have some old, I have an old Gil Kane um, black uh, mark. I think it's black oh. mark, right? Yeah, yeah. black mark um, page that has a ton of zip tone on it and it has 100% affected the paper underneath. Oh yeah, no, and there's some beautiful uh, Gil Kane pages out there and he would ink them with a Pentel pen. Yeah. And the Pentel markers are not permanent ink and they turn purple eventually and eventually they will no longer exist on the page. The page it'll, will be, the it'll it'll be gone. Fade. And they're also, you know, that stuff, that ink is also light sensitive. So if, let's say you have it, ex you have it out and it's on your wall and you don't have UV glass on it, or maybe even if you do, eventually it's still going to fade. Right. Interesting. And guys like Dave aren't going to tell you that. They're going to keep that a secret. <laughs> guys like Dave will keep that a secret. All right. One more thing. I want to show you guys this. What is that? Explain that. That's Steamworks Meadery okay. where I got my mead here in medford oregon mm -hmm. the banner's been running below so order some mead from them and have it uh, delivered to your house if you wanted mead it's not you can't find it everywhere right you can't mead is actually good mead is hard to come by well that's one of the reasons that i brought up the rent fair earlier that was my first taste of mead and then it's it's been a lifelong pursuit to to have it be part of my daily diet <laughs> part of your daily diet <laughs> Listen, mead has everything you need. It's got all the vitamins. Uh -huh. It's got all the minerals, and it's got all the uh, the Norse power that you want in a in a beverage. All right, here's what I'm going to do, Jeff, because you're because I can tell since it's your first time hosting the show that you probably want me to use more white splatter. Mm. Right. I think the fans want that for sure. So here goes. Do, do it. You're, you're, I, I... Highlights on you, bro. So Dan, I think I think that uh, that went okay. I think it went great, Jeff. Yeah. I like to see this. So that's what I was kind of hoping would happen. I have. I was hoping I get one big little. Well, not a little. It is a blotch there. So I'm going to dry it up. With yeah. Some, one lone Kirby crackle, which is kind of cool. So you like the happenstance of it? I, I love it. Yeah. And I'm going to use that to make another one. Not a fan of monkey shines, but a big fan of happenstance. Yeah. Remember I used a banana one time? I used it on a, a famous cover um, that John Romita did. Um, I don't. I don't. Tell me the banana story. So I was in my artiste phase and I was like, I, I need a special effects brush. And sometimes special effects brush brushes are simply brushes that are worn out and you didn't clean them well, or sometimes they just age and um, they're, you can just get weird texture from them. And I was like, I don't, ha I, I had tons of brushes from uh, the, the Romita Raiders um, back in the day. So I had tons of Winsor Newton Series 7s brushes and they were all pretty pristine. So I used to, I used the end of a banana peel dipped in white ink and used that to kind of do some crazy special effects on this. I think it was the issue 300 of the X-Men. It's got Magneto on the back cover, but I'm, a, I'm virtually all the X-Men. And uh, I was so proud of myself that I had used some, you know, bizarre tool to let me see if I can if I can reiterate what you just said in a mm -hmm. way that maybe the fans didn't catch. You inked an X-Men cover with a banana peel. Well not the whole thing. I mean I part some of the, the special effects thing. If I can ink the whole X-Men cover with a banana peel, I'm a special kind of guy. I mean I just want to make sure that people understand what you're saying. Like the banana peel it is involved. I, I, here's how it started, <laughs> Jeff. Or I imagine I was sort of, it was, it was a lifetime ago, but I was probably eating a banana because I do love them. Sure. And I was, I was finishing up the cover and I, and then probably like, you know, when you see like a cartoon, a light bulb goes off somebody's head. You think, why head. not ink with this? I'm like, wait a second. I got an idea here. And I just took the, took the banana peel, dipped it in some white paint and had at it. You know, it's not that, it's not as crazy as that may sound. Like people have been painting with vegetables <laughs> and fruit for a long time. Yeah, they paint vegetables and fruit for, <laughs> for a life study, but I was like, let's let's go white. Here I was complaining about people putting themselves in the comics, but I, I was like, let's reverse the whole still life, 
process. Yeah, no, I mean, I, it's, 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 a, it's a bold maneuver. Yeah, not too many people were doing it. Still, there's, I think I might be the only one who's, who's done something like that. I'm going to have to do some research. Uh, I'll have to look on Wikipedia, see if I can't find other comic book artists who use fruit to make art. Uh -huh. I'm sure they're out there. Dave's been kind of quiet. It sounds like Dave might know someone. Or Dave, do you know, tell us about the, the, the vegetables you've used to make art. Yeah, how many vegetables? I, I tried it with the tomato, but it kind of ruined it. <laughs> too much acid. That's pretty bold. Yeah. yeah. I think it was just too juicy. I got you. I think oh. if I used uh, sun dried tomatoes, it might have worked out better. Sounds well, I mean, artists better. used to make their own pigments and paints with uh, various you well, know, garden egg, items. Egg tempura. Yeah. yeah. Berries used to be made to make colors and pigments. Look at Dave go, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's coming out pretty good, dude. I like watching Dave's hand while he inks. It's, it's a very uh, hand. Um, I was say it's shaky as, shaky as hell. I like the way it moves. That's why that's why I've had a hard time adapting to drawing on a on a Cintiq or a an iPad because my hand shakes so much. I need that I need that paper grit to keep the resistance my, from. You know what? Uh, I have kind of a shaky hand. I was I was thinking to myself. When, I, when I'm drawing, I have a very steady hand. I was like, I, it's a it's a weird phenomenon. Like, yeah. if I'm drawing, I'm very, my hand's very steady. I'm like a surgeon, Jeff. What kind of surgeon? Surgeon that might use a banana peel if... if yeah, I was going to say, like, not a lot of surgeons... <laughs> you know, I didn't have a scalpel and I, I just ate a banana or a kumquat. Yeah, I mean, open-heart surgery with various fruits and vegetables... Yeah, my, you know what? Pineapples have kind of a hard skin. Like I'd use a pineapple, uh, you know, uh, whatever those things are. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I mean, who the hell named, who who the hell named a fruit kumquat? Come on. I think it's mm -hmm. French. That's another episode, Dave. That's, yeah, let's do that. On that note, we'll, we'll next time we're around, we'll talk about the various um, uh, vegetables and fruits we've used. Fruits and vegetables and, and art made therewith. So. All right, you're not well, making fun of me, are you, Jeff? Would I make fun of you? Yeah. No, listen, you're bold. I don't. I would never have the kind of um, audacity to to use a <laughs> banana peel. <laughs> I have never you know, John Romita, you know, junior piece. Yeah. I mean, you get, he had people like Al Williamson inking him, and you know, just Dan Green and all these like superstars. I think maybe Al would have been even a little bit better if he'd had a banana. Al would probably be a little healthier. Might still be around to this day. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's do this. Here. Let's uh, pull it back to here. Let's get our little faces on. All right. What's real quick, Jeff? What is like like all of these heroes that we've drawn have? They're saying something with their face. There's an expression, like mm -hmm. like mine saying probably for Asgard for whatever reason. Thor right. Being, right. You know, like Asgard is in trouble. There's a Fing Fang Foom is invaded on the Rainbow Bridge. What have you? Um, and he's, he's like, don't come here. Like, uh, what's, what's the flash saying in your, uh, drawing there? Um, the flash is probably saying I'm on my way to steamworks meadery in Medford, Oregon to get some <sighs> brand new mead. God, what a, what a callback. <laughs> I mean, it's. You were earning that mead, Jeff. You were earning <laughs> Listen, it. You're, you're due about three more, uh, jugs of mead. Here's the thing about this mead. It's really good. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's really good mead. Sweet Lord. Look at that. Yeah. All right, Dave. That's, that's a mead. great explanation. He's on his way to a meadery. It makes perfect sense. Dave, what is Puck saying right there? Uh, something in French, and I don't understand it because I don't speak French. I learned so much French. He's a Quebecois, right? Yeah, I think so. I think that's I think he, he also was. spoke if I remember my um my alpha flight he spoke 17 languages he spoke or, mandarin little Huck was very it, smart overcompensate for something what um <laughs> he was just a very intelligent guy who had traveled the world in those little somersaults yeah. all right little somersaults come on now all right yeah it turned <laughs> out I, this part it's really cool right here the bicep I kind of I don't know. I got to figure that out, but I don't know. I like the veins on the arm there. It turned out okay. I love it. it turned... Yeah, it looks good. Very cool. 
I'm gonna probably add like a big red spot behind him and write puck in it. Why red? Cool. I don't know. Why not? Well, you think it should be like orange? You can have it orange. All right. I mean, it could be red, for God's sake. I don't know. I think go with your instincts. What would John Byrne do? He's colorblind, so. He would have used that do a tone. Yeah, do a shade. Do a shade, right. Is John, he, John Byrne is colorblind, right? He is colorblind, but I, he would color it like that. John Byrne sketchbook was, he colored the, the cover of it. He would color things occasionally. He had a, he had all this stuff marked and. Uh, um, he would use the Pantone numbers? I I don't think it was a pan. I think he just had like the markers, you know, mm. properly it, labeled. Yeah. Gotcha. I think that's what he did. Yeah, but I mean, he's, he's colored better than I do. So. Uh well, I mean, that's let's let's just say that that will will answer that question later. So, guys, I think that was a a good show. I think we should probably wrap it up. Start heading you home. Some chorizo. Yeah, it's time for me to eat something. God, you get so hungry sometimes. I know, right? Like almost every day. Grab a Snickers, dude. I had to, Dave informed inform me I should grab a Snickers the other day, and I actually need, needed one. I was a little feisty. It's true. It's yeah. true. All right, All gentlemen, right. why don't we wrap it up? Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. There we wrap go. It. Wrap it up, B. <laughs> All right, guys. It was uh, great hanging out. Everyone, thank you for joining us. This is uh, the end of another episode of the Drink and Draw Social Club. Join us next week um, where we will, I don't know, what are we going to talk about, Dan? Well, Jim of Food might come on next week. There you go. Jim of Food. Yeah. Jim of Food, OG from uh, Drink and Draw. That'll be a very interesting episode. <laughs> That'll be fun. Jim's All right, gentlemen. Guy. I'll see you next week. Toodaloo, everybody. Bye, guys. Yep. But we're still here. <laughs>